Good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm making this video in direct response to Mac Attacks 1114 comment on my Smith and Wesson review. So I guess we found out who the Smith and Wesson lovers are. I was one of them, still am, like Smith and Wesson. But he said, "Don't make videos." So fuck you. I'm gonna make a video. So what I switched to is a Glock 22. And so this Glock 22, by the way, clearing procedures, you drop the magazine and then you rack it around out, don't try to catch it. In me, I mark the primers or the side of the case of the round that I rack out because the more you chamber that round, the more possibilities that it will fracture the anvil inside there and you'll have a dud. So I just chamber it one time and then it'll go into training ammo or Next time I go to the range and drop that mag, I'll shoot this round. Alright, so this is it. It's a Glock 22 that has been converted to 9mm. And so that's a Lone Wolf barrel in it, which was like $100, I think, something like that. Stock spring, all stock internals except for the barrel. There it is. It's fluted. It's cool. It's dirty. Yes, dirty. whoop de doo Still shoots really well. Actually, I shot my highest FBI qual with this gun uh, for a demo. It is 98%. I'll post that probably at the end of this video. Um, this gun is not without flaws, but first let's get into what's all been done to it. Starting with the slide. is a police trading one, so it came with the night sights on it. And then I had... Well, this one, the back one, you can see how it's all flaked off. I've tried to paint that one black again, and short of knocking that off and putting more primer on it and probably getting rid of the back night sights, it's not happening, so I'm fine with it. The front sight is orange, uh, so you can pick it up when the slide is recoiling. So say you're shooting here, boom, 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 you can bring it back down. That's a little exaggeration, but... It's so you can track it easier. I just wanted the front part of it, so you just see that part, but he went ahead and did all of it. Uh, and yes, you can Cerakote um, night sights. The thing is with the vials, you cannot bring heat up all the way to, whereas if you did a hard Cerakote, like on the slide, uh, you can only do a soft, uh, soft bake. So you can see on it that's chipped, and then even right there on the muzzle of the gun, it's chipped, the Cerakote is, or wearing off. That's normal wear and tear because I have to carry this open carry at work for fun and games. Um, that being said, Cerakote, the main issues I've had with this gun is due to the Cerakote. So unless your gun is like rusting and butt ugly, don't get your gun Cerakote no matter how much you care about it and how cool you want it to look like, like with that American flag pattern. Also, um, because the only things I've had wrong with this is stuck case. Uh, and this is all with Winchester Forged Ammo, which is not the best. I'm not shooting that anymore. Stuck case inside the chamber where you just tap and rack it out. Pretty simple. And then the frame, if you run Magpul P-Mags, uh, due to the Cerakote inside there, yeah, there's a little bit, uh, they don't drop free. So there's one issue. And then... The next issue is if you run the Winchester Forged Ammo in the Magpul P Mags, they will not work. They will seize up pretty quickly. Uh, I've had no one actually shoot the Winchester Forged Ammo from a P Mag and have it work flawlessly. There's onesies and twosies out there, but overall throughout an entire class or entire day of shooting, it does not work. Alright, so back to the frame. This is a stock Glock frame. Uh, it was a Gen 4, you can tell by the bigger magazine release right there. Uh, the finger grooves have been removed. There's been an undercut right there. Um, and it has a stippling job. This is the guy's first job stippling it. And if you know what you're looking for, you may be able to spot the imperfections. Uh, also, the grip has been reduced to a Glock 19 size. And it has these cutouts. So, when I do get a stuck magazine I can rip it out like this I don't know why maybe I'm missing something but when Glock cut them out up front I believe their intent was so you can rip it off your belt 
Uh, but no one, no one when they're dropping a magazine is running their thumb like this. It's always like that on the sides. So the reason why it is a long slide Glock 19 is because one, I want it that way. And two, the thought behind this is it actually comes from Rob Pincus. So Rob Pincus in the early 90s, probably right when I was born, he came up with the idea of, hey, if this slide right here is longer, then when the gun recoils, it have more weight up front because of this stuff, right? And as you can see, there's slightly more weight in the back, but it's kind of close. Now, what you'll notice if you ever shot one of the longer Glocks is that their slides are cut out right here. Yeah, right there. There's little cutouts there to reduce mass. So when the gun recoils, all this mass still goes straight back to recoil. Now this little bit up here could possibly be helping that uh, because it's going to tilt back in your hand like a lever. But you still have all the mass back here, which is where all your weight is. That's why the 19X, people say it's a really shootable gun because it has a shorter slide, less mass, reciprocating mass up here, longer grip so you can get a better hand on it. Um, the jury is still out. For me, this gun, I believe, points and uh, it's easier for me to come back onto, well, basically rest my front sight in between the rear notch, that's this guy. Uh, easier because it, the weight is there. I mean, I think it makes a difference. Uh, what else? Oh, to piss off the Apex trigger, guys, that's the stock lock trigger on all of my duty weapons or all my weapons, I, or all my firearms, or not weapons, firearms, they're tools. Um, all my firearms that I carry all the time, they will have a stock trigger in them. Plain and simple, the stock triggers don't, don't, you know, break or fail, usually, and they're set there for a specific reason. Uh, I think all the Apex or all the fancy trigger people are chasing a, a standard that they can't get with a, with a stock trigger mainly, mainly because they may not know how to shoot. That being said, I know Tom Goons runs Apex triggers and a whole bunch of other trainers use Apex triggers. They're great triggers, but they're just not for me. That being said, talking about chasing standards, that's why I have a hyper fire trigger in my AR. Because I'm trying to chase quicker follow up times and stuff like that. And it's like a two pound trigger, which is way too light for a duty, but duty firearm. There's my trigger spiel. All right. Another thing that you guys hinted me up on, on the MP one, was like, oh my god, poor maintenance. So this gun, yes, I do know maintaining a firearm is, is needed, but I've been the last four days cleaning all the rental guns at the range I work at, and they are way dirtier than this, and they still work. Yep. Um, so... And then the whole, see how this, uh, even on the, on the Gen 5 locks where they have an ambidextrous slide lock on it, the trigger bar does not contact the fucking slide lock, okay guys? That's, that's a design flaw. And then the gun was giving me that malfunction within 500 rounds. Like, it was like 400 and 300 rounds. It did start, stop, it would stop locking to the rear. <laughs> this gun has not stopped locking to the rear at all, even with the Magpul P mags in it. Because it probably doesn't have that flaw. And this gun's stuck and soaked in carbon also. So there's no issues there. Um, the last thing I think we should get into is... I don't know. It's a Glock. It works. It shoots. Pretty reliable. Or in reliability, actually. Uh, yeah. So for all the... Glock people that were like, oh my gosh, he hates Smith & Wesson, or all the Smith & Wesson people that said, oh my god, he hates Smith & Wesson. I don't hate either of them. I like shot both of them. I'm giving you honest reviews. This is what happens to them. Uh, and yeah, the oh, pulling out the magazine springs and stretching them. Yeah, that's a temporary fix. It's not permanent. And I don't want to have to buy new magazines after 6,000 rounds. Because I'm a fucking poor white guy. But, Oh, and speaking of prices and stuff, 
When I picked this gun up, I paid $380 for it at a gun show. I got all the Cerakote done for free because I was working for a Cerakoter. And this done for free because I was working for a Cerakoter. That being said, it took him about a year to get done because I was working for him. Not paying him. But, other than that, it works really, really well. Looks really good. Uh, the guy is still in business. I may or may not link him in below. He does fantastic work with wood and guns. That is my Glock 22 slash 19L review. Once again, let's have a shout out to our guy who left us a lovely comment. There's other ones out there, but this guy, he just hit it for me. Mac Attack 1114. Thank you very much. Uh, go and see his channel, guys. Uh, he has zero subscribers and zero videos out there. And just show him some love. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.